Good morning. It is morning. It is still dark out. Welcome or welcome back to Boogie Monsters. My name is PK and we look at new releases each week and each day of the week we look at a different genre of the new releases. It's Monday and it must be mysteries. So we will look at that. Um, some websites that I use as a resource don't list what's out this week until tomorrow because technically new release day is Tuesdays uh, but we will look at what we can today and then pick up any others that might straggle in tomorrow um, so I appreciate you being here well, let's hop in the next 25 minutes go very quickly and I have to say I chose this YouTube uh, Screenshot here because of the macarons. I want cookies. I know it's breakfast, but I want cookies. <laughs> All right, before we hop into that, though, let me show you real quickly what I'm reading. Uh, I finished three books this weekend because I was in the, you know, near the end of three books, not because I was an amazing reader or anything. And um, I finished. Um, Caught in Time by Julie, Julie McElwain. That is third in her series. Uh, it's a historical mystery in that she has traveled back from present day to uh, 1815 and is solving crimes. City Spies by James Ponty. Fabulous, fabulous uh, middle grade series about kid spies. And I finished Murder at Royal Botanic Gardens by Andrea Penrose. Uh, this is another great, this is fifth in series. This is another historical mystery set in the uh, early 1800s, but the emphasis is more on scientific um, industrial revolution kind of things rather than Jane Austen-ish, which is really appealing to me. What I'm currently reading, finish three, I'm going to start three. So I am uh, currently reading. for Spy versus Spy, but a touch of the fall spooky season-ish. It's paranormal-ish. Uh, a Sense of Danger by Jennifer Estep. And there's some magical abilities, urban and fantasy kind of paranormal romance-ish, but there's uh, a, some secret agencies, super spies going on there. Um, And I was also in the mood for fantasy. Really, I was in the mood for epic books. I, I have hit my reading uh, Goodreads goal of 100 books this year. And so everything I'm reading from that point on is frosting on the cupcake. So it's time to read the big books, which I'll be doing more of. So this is Engines of Empire by R.S. Ford. First of two so far in series. Um, this one is definitely fantasy, but it also has uh, industry trade and so forth, which are things that are key for me, which I very much enjoy. Um, kind of along the same thing, you can kind of tell what mood I'm in, is this is going to be a reread for me. I read this so many years ago, I have forgotten the details. It's historical, but I think there's also a fantasy el element, if I remember correctly. Uh, this is Freedom and Necessity by Stephen Bruce and Emma Bull. This one is, to, is an epistolary novel, so all of the writing is are, are letters, which is also a key word trigger thingy for me. I love that, I love that. If you've not read um, the Guernsey uh, Sweet Potato Pie, blah, blah, blah book, that is another epistolary novel, which I absolutely love. But this one is set in 1849 and um, like I say, I read it so long ago. It was first published in 1997. So I might have read it around that time, at least, you know, at least 20 years ago. So maybe early 2000s. And it's a big book. It's a densely written book because being letters, it's the language of the time as without losing, you know, getting too, too deep in it and losing the modern uh, reader. But I, 
I have always wanted to reread it, and now hopefully is the time. We will see. Sometimes I have grand plans and they just don't happen. I'm sure nobody else has that kind of problem either. <laughs> Alrighty, let's jump into the new releases. Let me close some tabs here so I'm not as confused. Alrighty, this is from bookriot.com. Now again, this site is not comprehensive um, because the first one I'm actually gonna show you comes out this week, tomorrow. The second in the Alias Emma series. It's not even listed in those sites. How can that be? This is uh, The Traitor by Ava Glass. I am getting a physical copy tomorrow, uh, but I have read this already by some miracle. I never get approved on NetGalley uh, for advanced reading copies, but I was for this one, and I was just tickled pink. When, you might remember that if you're a, a viewer from the very beginning. I was so excited. So this is second in series. Uh, British spy Emma Makepeace goes undercover on a Russian oligarch's super yacht where she's one one blah, one wrong move away from a watery grave. Uh, James Patterson says Emma Makepeace is a worthy heir to the James Bond mantle. An MI6 operative is found dead, locked in a suitcase inside his own apartment. Despite an exhaustive search, no fingerprints are found at the scene. Emma Makepeace and her handler Ripley know an assassination when they see one, and such an obvious murder can mean only one thing. Someone is sending a message. As she digs into his past, Emma discovers that the unfortunate spy had been investigating two Russian oligarchs based in London. He'd become obsessed with the idea that the two were spies, aided by a third man, whose identity he had yet to uncover. When he shared his findings within MI6 in the weeks before he died, the response came back fast and clear drop the investigation and move on. Had he uncovered a secret that cost him his life? To pick up where he left off without ending up in a suitcase of her own, Emma goes undercover on one of the oligarch's million dollar yachts, scheduled to set sail from the Côte d'Azur to Monaco. Under other circumstances, this would be a dream vacation, but if Emma's real identity gets discovered, it's a death sentence. As Emma's work reveals secrets she'd be safer not knowing, the danger ratchets up. The killer may be closer to home than any of them imagined, and Emma won't be safe until he or she is caught. And I forgot to share the tab. This is The Traitor by Ava Glass, second in the Alias Emma series. So, highly recommend. I think copy is required because I just seem to be not on the ball this morning. All righty. Also this week, the fourth book in the Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman, The Last Devil to Die. It's rarely a quiet day. For the Thursday Murder Club, shocking news reaches them. An old friend has been killed, and a dangerous package has been he was protecting has gone missing. The gang's search leads them into the antique business, where the tricks of the trade are as old as the objects themselves. As they encounter drug dealers, art forgers, and online fraudsters, as well as heartache close to home, Elizabeth, Joyce, Ron, and Ibrahim have no idea whom to trust. With the body count rising, the clock ticking down, and trouble firmly on their tail, has their luck finally run out, and who will be the last devil to die? That is a very popular series. Did they make that one into a TV show? Was I hearing in uh, in the UK? Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. Two women from opposite sides of the country are brought together by violent acts of the same man and become allies and sisters in arms as they pursue the justice that would otherwise elude them in one of the most acclaimed, highly anticipated thrillers of the year. Masterfully blending elements of psychological suspense and true crime, Jessica Knoll, author of The Blah, delivers a new and exhilarating thriller in Bright Young Women. The book opens on a Saturday night in 1978, hours before a soon-to-be infamous murderer descends upon a Florida sorority house with deadly results. 
The lives of those who survive, including sorority president and key witness Pamela Schumacher, are forever changed. Across the country, Tina Cannon is convinced her missing friend was targeted by the man papers refer to as the all-American sex killer, and that he struck again. Determined to find justice, the two join forces as their search for answers lead to a final shocking confrontation. J.A. Jance, a very big name in mystery, in the mystery world for a very long time. Blessings of the Lost Girls. Driven by a compulsion that challenges his self-control, the man calling himself Charles Milton prowls the rodeo circuit, hunting young women. He chooses those he believes are the most vulnerable, wandering alone and distracted before he strikes. For years, he's been meticulous in his methods, abducting, murdering, and disposing of his victims while leaving no evidence of his crimes or their identities behind. Indigenous women have become his target of choice, knowing law enforcement's history of ignoring their disappearances. Very timely, trendly, trending. A cold case has just been assigned to Dan Party, a field officer with the newly formed Missing and Murdered Indigenous Peoples Task Force. Rosa Rios, a young woman of Apache descent and one-time rodeo star, vanished three years ago. Human remains, a homicide victim burned beyond recognition, were discovered in Cochise County around the time she went missing. They have finally been confirmed to be Rosa. With Sheriff Joanna Brady's help, Dan is determined to reopen the case and bring long-awaited justice to Rosa's family. As the orphan son of a murdered Indigenous woman, he feels an even greater personal obligation to capture this killer. Joanna's daughter Jennifer is also taking a personal interest in this case, having known Rosa from her own amateur rodeo days. Now a criminal justice mayor, major, she's unofficially joining the investigation. And as it becomes clear that Rosa has just one victim of a serial killer, was just one victim of a serial killer. Both Jennifer and Dan know they're running out of time to catch an elusive predator who's proven capable of getting away with murder. That sounds very, again, timely, but um, not just a surface hype kind of thing. Hi, Mary, good morning. Happy Monday. Sorry to be late getting workmen. Oh, they finally showed up. Awesome. On my bedroom door. Can't wait. Oh, I appreciate that, Mary, so much. You finished your book last night. Hooray. On to the next one. Hope you have a good day. All right. You do what you need to do. Oh, thank you. I got shorn. <laughs> Hi, Storm. So thank you for showing up this morning. I hope you're having a good morning. We are just looking at the new mysteries this week. Some of them. All right, next up here, Saving Emma by Alan Eskins. A lawyer's race to reveal a wrongful conviction collides with the dark shadow of a murder in his own home in this, etc., etc. When Bodie Sandin first receives the case of Elijah Matthews, he's certain there's not much he can do. Elijah, who believes himself to be a prophet, has been locked up in a psychiatric hospital for the past four years, convicted of brutally murdering the pastor of a megachurch. But as a law professor working for the Innocence Project, Bodhi agrees to look into Elijah's file. When he does, he's alarmed to find threads that lead back to the death of his colleague and friend, Ben Pruitt, a man shot to death four years earlier in Bodhi's own home. Ben's daughter, Emma, has lived with Bodhi and Bodhi's wife, Dee, ever since that awful night. Now 14 years old, Emma has been growing distant and soon makes a fateful choice that takes her far from the safety of her godparents. Probably joins the cult. Just desperate to bring her home and to free an innocent man, Bodhi must do all he can to investigate Elijah's case while fighting to save the family he was he has deeply come to love. Got some deep subjects so far this morning. Let's do maybe that's gonna be a little bit lighter. We'll see. Dead on target. It's an Agatha Raisin by MC Beaton. Yes. A visit to the local village fate for a spot of fun and relaxation turns into a nightmare for Agatha Raisin when she discovers the body of the local landowner in the woods with an arrow in his chest and trousers round his ankles. Eight. Agatha's old adversary, Detective Chief Inspector Wilkes, declares the death a, a tragic accident, believing the victim has been hit by a stray arrow from an archery demonstration. Agatha is convinced of foul play, however, and is shocked when Wilkes eventually agrees with her as his prime murder suspect. 
Determined to clear her name and find the real killer, Agatha launches her own investigation, quickly becoming involved with a family at war, an un unscrupulous gangster, and a killer who is determined to make her the next victim. Dot, 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 dot. The Golden Gate by Amy Chua. This is a debut novel, it looks like. In Berkeley, California, in 1944, homicide detective Al Sullivan has just left the swanky Claremont Hotel after drinking the bar when a presidential candidate is assassinated in one of the rooms upstairs. A rich industrialist with enemies among the anarchist factions on the far left, Walter Wilkinson could have been targeted by any number of groups. But strangely, Sullivan's investigation brings up the specter of another tragedy at the Claremont 10 years earlier the death of seven-year-old Iris Stafford, a member of the Bainbridge family, one of the wealthiest in all of San Francisco. Some say she haunts the Claremont still. The many threads of the case keep leading Sullivan back to the three remaining Bainbridge heiresses, now adults. Iris's sister Isabella and her cousins Cassie and Nicole, determined not to let anything distract him from the truth, not the powerful influence of Bainbridge's grandmother or the political aspirations of Berkeley's district attorney or the interest of China's first lady, Madam Chong Kai-shek, in his findings, Sullivan follows his investigation to its devastating conclusion. Dark Ride by Lou Burney. Sometimes the person you least expect is just the hero you need. 21-year-old Hardy Hardly Reed, good-natured, easygoing, usually stoned, is drifting through life. A minimum wage scare actor at an amusement park, he avoids unnecessary effort and unrealistic ambitions. Then one day he notices two children around six or seven sitting all alone on a bench. Hardly checks if they're okay and sees injuries on both children. Someone is hurting these kids. He reports the incident to Child Protective Services. That should be the end of it. After all, Hardly's not even good at looking out for himself, so the last thing he wants to do is look out for anyone else. But he's haunted by the two kids. It's heartbreaking for them. And the more research he does, the less he trusts the Child Protective Services, understaffed and overworked, will do anything about it. That leaves Hardly. He's probably the last person you'd ever want to count on, but those two kids have nobody else but him. Hardly has to do what's right and help them. For the first time in his life, Hardly decides to fight for something. This might be the one point in his in his entire life, he realizes, that is the entire point of his life. He will help those kids. And it goes on quite a bit. That You can tell we're going into fall. We're getting into the deeper subjects. Murder at Midnight by Catherine Shellman. Perfect for fans of Deanna Rayburn and Ashley Weaver. Got my attention. When a body is found shot to death after an unexpected snowstorm, Lily Adler quickly realizes that some people will stop at nothing to bury their secrets. Regency widow Lily Adler is looking forward to a quiet Christmas tide away from the schemes and secrets she witnessed daily in London. Not only will she be visiting the family of her late husband, she will be reunited with Captain Jack Hartley, her friend and confidant, finally returned after a long voyage at sea but secrets aren't only found in London. Jack's younger sister, Amelia, is the center of the neighborhood scandal and gossip. She refuses to tell anyone what really happened, even when an unexpected snowstorm strands the neighborhood families together after a Christmas ball. Stuck until the snow stops, the Adler's Hartleys and their neighbors settle in for the night, only to be awakened in the morning by the scream of a maid who, is, who has just discovered a dead body. The victim was the well-to-do son of a local gentleman, the same man whose name has become so scandalously linked to Amelia's. With the snow still falling and no way to come or go, it's clear that someone in the house was responsible for the young man's death. When suspicion instantly falls on Jack's sister, he and Lily must unmask the true culprit before Amelia is convicted of a crime she didn't commit. Murder in the Family by Kara Hunter. One body, six experts. Can you solve the case before they do? Written as the teleplay of a true crime documentary. It was a case that gripped the nation. In December 2003, Luke Ryder, the stepfather of acclaimed filmmaker Guy Howard, then age 10, was found dead in the garden of their suburban family home. Luke Ryder's murder has never been solved. Guy Howard's mother and two half-sisters were in the house at the time of the murder, but all swear they saw nothing. Despite a high-profile police investigation and endless media attention, no suspect was ever charged. But some murder cases are simply too big to forget. Now comes the sensational new streaming series, Infamous, dedicated to investigating and perhaps cracking this famous cold case. Years later, a group 
group of experts re-examine the evidence with shocking results. Does the team know more than they're, they've been letting on? That sounds kind of interesting. And that one came out last year and is now looking like it's being released in paperback. So that's quite a few actually. Let's check over here. I check over here. Did we get everything? Turk ride. How to find a missing a study. These are also they're saying coming in, coming out this week. A study in drowning, a young adult by Ava Reed. This is her young adult debut in a dark academic fantasy. We'll save that for fantasy. For fantasy day. Dark ride. Nope, that's the one we saw. How to find a missing girl. That one is young adult that we did not. For the fans of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and Veronica Mars, got my attention. A year ago, beloved cheerleader Stella Blackthorne vanished without a trace. Devastated, her younger sister Iris launched her own investigation, but all she managed to do was scare off the police's only lead and earn a stern warning. Once she turns 18, more meddling means prison-level consequences. Then, a year later, the unthinkable happens. Iris's ex-girlfriend Heather goes missing too, just after dropping the polarizing last episode of her true crime podcast all about Iris's sister. This time, nothing will stop Iris and her amateur sleuthing agency from solving these disappearances. But with a suspicious detective watching her every move, an enemy turned friend turned maybe more to be to contend with are only 30 days until she turns 18. It's a race against the clock for Iris to solve the most dangerous case of her life. And then there's an anthology, looks like. And then Wandering Through Life is a uh, autobiography about Donna Leon, who has written a lot of um, as well. So we ran out of time again, once again. And we will look at tomorrow, we'll look at romance, and uh, hopefully, we'll have time to look at cozy mysteries because we didn't have time to look at cozy mysteries at all today. But I sure appreciate you guys stopping by and taking a look at what we had today. If you're watching later, thank you for stopping by later. Um, tonight, reading sprints aren't on my channel. They're on Storm's channel, uh, Storm Reads. And that starts at 5 o'clock Mountain Time, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Bring your own book. Lots of fun chatter. Um, and then tomorrow, again, mysteries. I'm sorry, romance. Wednesday will be sci-fi fantasy, more cozies, and so forth. So I hope you have a really good Monday. We can do this. Drink lots of coffee. Um, and as the, the banner says here, don't be a bookworm, be a bookie monster. Um, 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 um. Thank you. God bless.